The head coach, Isaac Collins Show. Here's Dan Flickinger and Seton Hill head coach, Isaac Collins. We continue live on Griffin's game day, setting you up for kickoff between the Griffins and the Lock Haven Eagles. Our Griffins player spotlight is coming up with Jarvis McClam. But first, we do talk to the head coach of the Seton Hill Griffins, Isaac Collins. And the Coach Collins Show is being brought to you by our friends at Dino Sports Lounge in Greensburg and Latrobe on Route 30. Coach, sometimes tough to know where to start after a, a tough loss like that. So just your general thoughts and, and how the game last week kind of snowballed on you, the uh, opener loss to uh, Shippensburg 64-14. What kind of happened in the game? Well, I think it, you know, it started off with all of the things that we talked about all camp, what we talked about this offseason, uh, just the, the details, the little things that we're going to need to do to be successful in a good league, uh, you know, which is we have to extend drives on offense and we have to be able to kill drives on defense. It comes down to as simple as that. You know, we had a number of opportunities in the first half in particular where we had chances to get off the field on third down and they made some plays that, uh, you know, that we didn't make uh, to, to uh, keep their scoring drives going and then offensively uh, we moved the ball a little bit and then we would shoot ourselves in the foot with a penalty or not converting on third down and that's really you know the big part of uh, what that lead was that they had at halftime and certainly we felt we could make some adjustments and come back in the second half but that just wasn't the case. A lot of energy coming into a season. You have high hopes and everything, and still a very long season to go. But you have to kind of remind the players of that. What was your message like after the game in terms of um, you know the intangible of that? Just making sure that confidence is still. Well, we had told them before that you know the the PSAC you know Ch uh, West Championship wasn't going to be won or lost uh, on that day, and and I just kind of reiterated that you know what here's the bottom line. We got a good football team. We did not play well. Uh, some of our top players didn't play well. We didn't show up uh, in areas that we need it to or we felt we would uh, so we have to be able to go back to work figure out why we didn't make the plays we were making and you know focus on trying to you know beat Lock Haven. And I know we talked after the game bouncing back when things aren't going well early for you I know that's something you guys are working on too right? That is I mean and that's something that uh, you know really kind of surprised me because I thought we were a little bit uh, further ahead of the curve uh, this year than we had been in previous years but unfortunately when things started to unravel we started to see some of the old ways creeping out of some of our players so we we had to work this week to try and uh, get that stuff uh, ironed out. Let's take a closer look at the game, Coach. I know there were a number of issues, but it seemed like the defense had a, a lot of breakdowns and pass coverages. When you look, there were three touchdown passes caught by running backs last week. Was that uh, a miscommunication thing on defense? Well, no. I mean, at, at the second level, we did not play very well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Our linebackers uh, came in on, on uh, Monday, and they were probably as disappointed as anyone on the team because certainly uh, that was something going into the game plan that we knew they would do. You know, they had talented backs. They knew that uh, they had a redshirt freshman quarterback. We didn't expect with our experience on the back end that they try to throw the ball down the field. So we knew it was going to be the short and intermediate game and just not being able to make tackles in the flat, losing leverage on the running back. Those little things, you know, really kind of were disappointing because there are things that we saw them do against our guys where they would, would cover backs out of the backfield. So it was another one of those elements of just things that kind of surprised us uh, that it wasn't an ability thing. Uh, I think it was really kind of just a focus thing that we didn't get done uh, as players and as coaches. You guys went down down 14 to nothing and then you put together your best drive of the game early uh, in the second quarter you take a look at the drive eight plays 70 yards you had big yardage on the ground talk about that drive and, and really why you the offense you think couldn't really get back to the execution on that drive because again it was like hot knife through butter for that one particular drive and that was kind of your best of the game yeah I mean and, and that was kind of you know uh, something that we felt going into the game and really coming into the season that we'd be able to do having better balance with being able to run the football. Uh, the first couple drives we did not do a good job in terms of securing the second level. There were a couple busts up front uh, with some of the new guys in the offensive line, uh, but they kind of put it together on that drive, so certainly we were excited and we felt like hey, here's an opportunity. we got our feet on the ground. Let's go out and do what we do. Uh, but unfortunately, they came back. They made a couple of adjustments. Uh, our guys you know, did not do uh, the things that they had done in that drive the rest of the game. 
It was 27 to seven uh, shortly uh, after, uh, late in the first half, I should say. That touchdown scored by Seton Hill was early in the second quarter. Um, Shippensburg had just scored. Then Larry Joshua gave you guys good field position. Not much time left in the half. A couple of plays later, Dan Petrangelo hits Jarvis McClam, who we're going to be talking to in a moment. Great effort by him, and he came just short of the goal line. But you guys still had some time left, a little bit of time. You're coming up to clock the ball. Shippensburg kind of surprisingly calls a timeout, so they give you guys a chance to maybe set up and get what you want to do. Um, and Khalil Howard gets stopped with no time left on the clock uh, for the last play of the first half. You guys nearly had seven points going into halftime. I don't know if it would have been a different game or not, but certainly you can look at turning points of the game. Could have been one. You could have had some momentum going into halftime. But kind of take us through that uh, whole uh, process and how it played out. Well, you know, unfortunately we had to use a few of our timeouts to kind of settle our guys down during the course of the uh, first half. Uh, so. Uh, coming into that scoring drive really started with Larry with a big return uh, to, to get us field position because at that point we really were looking to kind of take a knee and just get out of the uh, half and let's, let's regroup let's figure out what we can do when we got the big return got it in their territory uh, you know we felt like hey let's take a shot you know because worst case scenario uh, you know we would give the ball back to them on their side of the field and most likely they would take a knee uh, so when Jarvis hit the big play we were excited uh, the great news is, is we practice that drill all the time in terms of running to the ball and clocking it. Uh, so they were ready to go. So when they called the timeout, it was great for us. Gave us a chance to regroup. We got the play that we wanted. Uh, you know, we just didn't quite execute it as well as we needed to. Uh, fullback was a little bit wider. Didn't get enough push. Uh, and it was close. I mean, you watch it on film. I'm, I'm still scratching my head a little bit on that one. But uh, the referee had a better angle than I, and, and, and he called it no touchdown. So I told our guys, we had to go back to the locker room and figure out a way to uh, you know, put some things together in the second half. We took a look at some uh, guys' individual performances. I know Dan wasn't at his uh, sharpest, uh, had some dropped passes, things like that. Kind of evaluate his play, and I promise this won't be a weekly question to you, Coach, <laughs> but when you get behind like that, was there any consideration of going to Christian Strong? No, because it wasn't anything with, with Dan. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, there, there was a, uh, Dan's got to do a better job of managing the game, but we thought, you know, in terms of what we were trying to do, uh, you, know, he, you know, he executed uh, about as well as you could, you could ask him and you could expect. Uh, with uh, you know where we're at in the program, uh, for us to have a quarterback change, uh, you know things have to go really, really soft. He has to you know really kind of play poorly, uh, and Christian has to really kind of step up his game. Right now, uh, I told the offensive staff, I don't want to get into the dog and pony show of flipping yeah. quarterbacks during the game. Let's play one guy. If he falls apart, then we can look at the other guy if he's a better option. And right now, we feel like Dan gives us the best chance to uh, to be successful. And we're hoping this week he's a little bit healthier that he'll be able to use his legs a little bit more and I think uh, the rust hopefully will knock off because he had a full week of practice. On the injury front, Josh Falatovich started but played just a quarter. I know that he was kind of banged up in one of the scrimmages. What's his uh, status here today against Lock Haven? And uh, also, I know you have some other injuries on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, well, he's, uh, he's going to be out. Um, you know, he's, he's been nursing uh, this knee injury, and it's just kind of it's not getting any better. So uh, in talking with Doc and our training and medical staff, we just feel like it's going to be best to shut him down and see if we can get him 100% healthy for the uh, for the long haul. You know, we got a tough PSAC West uh, schedule coming up. Uh, and we want to make sure he's ready to go for that. So uh, he'll be out today. Uh, in terms of injuries, uh, our big ones are going to be on defense. Uh, you know, uh, we're looking right now. Uh, David Gutsmore is out. You know, our starting outside linebacker. Uh, he's nursing an ankle injury. Uh, and then we have a few other guys that are going to be game time decisions that we'll uh, we'll see uh, how they feel in pregame. Freshman wideouts, Ardell Brown, Shane Leatherbury got a lot of uh, playing time last week. I um, know they had a couple of drops here and there, their first game uh, ever in their uh, collegiate career. How do you think they acquitted themselves? Uh, I think they did a great job. I mean, obviously, uh, I felt really bad for Shane because he's uh, made some unbelievable catches in, in preseason camp, mm -hmm. you know, uh, some Odell Beckham-like catches <laughs> uh, that really have us excited about him. And I think he was really disappointed and down. I grabbed him after the game and just told him, hey, man, you got to you know, keep working, go back to work this week. You got the ability to, to help our football team, uh, which is rare uh, as a freshman. So, uh, you know, this is, they got to put this behind you. So hopefully, you know, that was kind of their jittery game and they got that out of their system. They've seen what live bullets look like uh, and we're looking forward to uh, a bright future out of both those guys. We'll be talking with uh, Jarvis McClam coming up in a couple of moments. Uh, one of your most consistent players, certainly against Shippensburg. Talk about his effort, Coach. Well, I mean, there's no doubt. He's uh, one of my all-time favorites. I, I think if uh, Lockhaven called up and said we want to play football in the 
parking lot. He'd show up ready to go. <laughs> I mean, he's one of those guys that just loves playing the game. Uh, he has a lot of fun doing it. Uh, he, he goes out. He plays hard. He gives everything that he got. Uh, you know, and, 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 and to me, um, you know, I shared with our football team, you know, he's a guy that we got to get more guys doing that, you know, more guys that are showing up and having passion about this game and, and, and really kind of, you know, giving everything that they got and leaving it all on the field. So, so certainly was very pleased with him. And, you know, he was, uh, you know, ready to fall out because we got him returning kicks. We're throwing the ball to him. We're handing the ball to him. But uh, when, he's, uh, when you have a dynamic player like that, you got to use him in a bunch of different ways. And we're looking forward to uh, him having a great season. Well, let's turn our attention to the Lock Haven Eagles, Seton Hill's opponent here today. Uh, they're going through a transitional period right now with their new head coach. Um, got beat by Clarion last week. They committed five turnovers. And I know Josh Falatovich out of the lineup for you defensively, a guy that causes and, and gets a, a number of turnovers. And you have some injuries on that side of the ball. But you guys looking to be opportunistic this week defensively? I think we have to uh, find a way. I think we, you know, their changes, the subtle changes they've made to their offense under the new staff uh, is going to pose some problems for us. Uh, you know, uh, they're, they're like a 70% play action pass team, which uh, really kind of stresses your linebackers. They put you in a lot of run pass conflicts. Uh, so if you're, you know, not fitting the box properly, you know, they're giving the ball. Uh, if you're, uh, you know, dropping in coverage and, and, you're, and you're not dropping to the right zones, their quarterback's able to find windows. So we're going to have to be really, really disciplined on the uh, defensive side of the ball, and we're going to have to find a way to, to create turnovers because they're very efficient. Uh, they're, they're throwing the short game. They're pounding the ball at you. Uh, their quarterback, we expect, is going to be better, and you know, we're going to expect that game two, they're not going to turn the ball over as many times. So we've got to find a way to either get them out, off the field on third down or create turnovers. When you go up against a team early in the season that has a new coach, obviously you don't have much lock haven film. Do you kind of try to dig up some film on Urbana where he was before to kind of get maybe a better feel of his offense yeah, well, what and we, defense? Yeah, well, yeah what we tried to do in the offseason is really kind of talk to some people mm -hmm. that, uh, that played in the conference with him and get a little bit of a feel of what his philosophy is because the one thing that you know uh, is evident anytime you get a new coach is while some things may be similar, they arrive and they got to look at their personnel. You know, so having the one game on him gave us a pretty good idea that you know they're kind of sticking to their roots a little bit. There are you know, some things that in talking with some of the coaches in that league, that, uh, that I think will be coming. I just don't know if it'll be this week or if it'll be two or three weeks down the road. So you're kind of preparing for, you know, treating it like another first, you know, first game. You know, you don't know what to expect. So you got to make sure you're taking care of yourself, making sure we're sound, make sure we're, we can defend the uh, sets that they've shown on film. Uh, and then you got to be ready to adjust during the uh, course of the game. Well, what should we expect from Lock Haven and new coach Dave Trainer, And also, of course, um, you know, what do you guys have to do to, to come away with a win for the second straight year over the Eagles? Well, I think number one is, is we're going to have to defensively, we're going to have to stop the run. You know, we can't allow uh, their backs. And they got two uh, different style of running backs. You know, one's kind of a pounder, one's a kind of a scat back. So we have to do a great job. They do, <laughs> ironically, release their backs in the flat and <laughs> get them in the pass route. So we better be uh, on mm -hmm. top of that or that could lead to some, some big plays or them converting some third down. So I think it's going to start there. And then we got to be disciplined on the back end and not give up any explosive plays. I thought Overall, our secondary did a really good job of, of keeping things in front of them against Shippensburg, and they got to keep that trend going. You know, most of uh, their big pass plays came underneath. You know, which we got to make some adjustments, get our linebacker squared away. But uh, you know, I'm confident on the back end that if those guys can keep uh, things in front of them, not give up explosive plays, hopefully we can fix the second level and, and get some pressure with our front four. Uh, so I think that's where that started. Offensively, it's going to come down to we're rhythm offense. You know, we have to get first downs. We have to stay on. The field. We have to extend drives. We have to give our skill guys an opportunity to make plays. If you go three and out, that you know that means that Jarvis is only touching the ball once or twice. You know, so we got to find a way to get into those drives where it's 10, 12 plays. Because now all of a sudden you get Jarvis and Ardell and Eric Brown and Malik and all those guys touching the ball a couple times during the drive. I'm pretty confident we're going to find a way to get into the end zone. The other thing it does, it plays into us being able to run the football. Because now you get an opportunity with more plays to give Stout some handoffs. So if you're going to be a a 60 40 uh, you know pass to run ratio uh, if you're only getting five plays then that's not a lot of touches for our running back so I think the consistency on that side of the ball is going to be critical going forward uh, you know and especially today against Lock Haven. How was the week of practice guys ready to bounce back today? It was it was a little bit tough for them uh, you know because I, I wasn't in the best of moods you know uh, this week uh, so we it's been a little bit of kind of calling guys out and challenging them uh, and it came to a boiling point on Wednesday uh, where we kind of shuffled some things 
things and created some competition uh, in the body of practice. A few fights broke out, which uh, you never like to see, but it was some emotional things mm -hmm. that were happening. So we're hoping uh, that that will translate to our guys being a little bit more focused this week and coming out and, and playing with a little bit more heart. Coach, thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, what? Did, first of all, I got to ask you too, or I should say, lastly, I have to ask you too about the game on Thursday, Steelers and Patriots. <laughs> I know that you had a chance to, after practice to to kind of check it out. Would you? Well, I mean, I mean, I think I think it's definitely uh, there's there's hope for the Steelers in, in spite of some of the injuries. Uh, yeah. When you have uh, you know the number of starters that were either out or suspended uh, in the, in the play to defending champs, uh, as tough as they did, and, and again, what as a, from a coaching perspective was a little bit of a sloppy game, uh, but they lost by a touchdown. And I know that some people say, well, you know, that last touchdown doesn't mean anything. From my perspective, is is that the final score on the scoreboard is the final score. You know, I, I was really kind of expecting on a big night. You know, there you know celebrating winning a Super Bowl that they were going to kind of run away with it because the Steelers are a little bit depleted uh, so I think it definitely gives us hope that this season uh, that they're going to have a chance yeah people want to say all the things that they did wrong and, and those types of things but you know they lost by seven points to Tom an inspired Tom Brady <laughs> yes. on the road in the season opener and again they had all those things going wrong that they have a chance to correct so um, I think there were some some positives when you look at it that way absolutely so we'll, we'll see what happens there's probably a lot of people watching right now from out of the state of Pennsylvania and say, I don't like the Steelers. I don't <laughs> yeah. care about that stuff, but but we do. We, we root for the Steelers, no doubt about it. And, of course, uh, Cortez Allen as well coach, uh, coached him at uh, the Citadel. I know he's been kind of working through some things, and, and hopefully he can kind of well, bounce yeah, back here. Definitely hoping he can bounce back. He's a great kid, uh, and uh, I'm rooting for him as well. Coach, thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate it. Good luck. Yep. Thanks. That's Coach Isaac Collins. Seton Hill Griffins, our Coach Collins show, brought to you by Dino's Sports Lounge in Greensburg and Latrobe. Coming up next, we'll have our Griffins player spotlight with Jarvis McClam. We continue on Griffins Game Day. We're live on the Westmoreland Sports Network.